Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we'll be doing the second part of the tutorial for the 5463 module in the GWG1000. In this part we're going to cover the ABC functions, the altimeter, barometer, compass, thermometer and the recall screen. Now if you want to see how to set up the watch initially and how to use all the timekeeping functions including stopwatch, timer, world time, alarm and all the others make sure to check out the part one of this tutorial and I'll probably put a link here. I also did a review of this watch and that's also going to be in the description. Now like usual with all my other tutorials in the description you will find a table of content with time codes so you can jump to specific parts of the video or functions of the watch. However I would advise you to watch the whole thing the first time just so you get acquainted with all the functions that this watch has. Okay, so like I said, we're going to cover the ABC functions and we're going to start with the compass. Now this watch has a dedicated compass button. So to enter the compass, you simply press the comp button. Once you do, the seconds hand is going to start showing the north uh, every second for the next 60 seconds. Once it reaches, once it passes 60 seconds, it's simply going to resume as a seconds hand. And if you can restart the cycle, the measuring cycle, every time whenever you want by pressing this. So if I press it again, the cycle of 60 seconds has just uh, just restarted. Now, although the seconds hand is showing the, the north, the display over here is actually showing the direction where you're pointing the watch with the sides of the world here and the bearing in degrees right here. So as you can see, if we change it, the bearing and the, and the direction of the world is actually going to change. So if we want to restart the cycle again, press it, the hands goes to, go, goes to 12 and then finds the north. Now while in the compass you can do two things. You can calibrate it if you want to make sure that magnetic that magnetism isn't affecting it and you can also input the magnetic declination. To do both of these all you have to do is unscrew the crown and pull it out. And this watch uh, has what's called a bi-directional bidirectional uh, calibration. And to toggle between the calibration and the magnetic declination while you're in the calibration mode, you simply press the mode button. So as you can see, you can do it like this between these two. Now the magnetic declination is the difference in degrees between true north and magnetic north. And this is used if you're using a map that actually has magnetic declination written on it. If it does, you simply input that number into the watch. And you do it by turning the crown. And you can go due east in degrees and due west. If you're using a map that doesn't use whole, all the whole degrees or it has point something of a degree, you will need to round it up because the watch only offers all uh, the whole degrees. It doesn't offer parts of degrees. Okay, so let's put it to zero. When you put it to zero, that's pretty much declination off. Let's move to the bidirectional calibration. Now to calibrate the compass, all you have to do is put the watch level while in the calibration mode and press the comp button. Once you do that, the watch is going to tell you to wait. And it doesn't have to be pointing north. It doesn't matter where you're pointing. Just keep it level and keep it straight. Once it completes this, it's going to tell you to turn 180 degrees. So now you take the watch and turn it exactly 180 degrees from the first part and press the comp button again. And again, you're waiting for the OK. Once it says OK, it means that a calibration was successful. If it writes ERR as an error, and as you can see, this one just completed as OK. If it writes ERR for error, you just simply repeat the process. And that's it. The calibration has completed. You simply close the crown and the compass has been calibrated. And that's pretty much it. OK, the next function that we're going to cover is the barometer. Once you enter the barometer, you have to do it through the mode button. So press it, press the mode button to exit the compass and go back to the home screen. And now the next press of the button takes us to the barometer. Now while in the barometer, the barometer is going to take readings every five seconds for the, for the next three minutes. And then after that, it's going to take readings every two minutes for the following hour. However, even if you're not in the barometer, let's say if we go back to the home screen, the watch is still going to keep reading the barometric data every two hours indefinitely. So the watch always constantly measures the barometric data 
every two hours. And to see that data, you don't have to be in the barometer. You can simply press the adjust button in the home screen and the watch is gonna toggle between these screens until you reach this one, where it actually shows you the barometric data. With each one of these dots up and down representing one hectopascal, and each dot left and right represents two hours. Now this makes barometer the most useful function this watch has because it can allow you to predict the weather. When you see an up moving, upward moving line like this, it means that weather is getting better. It was bad and it's getting better. If you see a downward, line it means that there is a storm coming or bad weather is coming and when the when the line is straight it means that you have stable weather and it's going to stay at what you are currently so this is pretty cool but back to barometer once you're in the barometer you're going to actually see the actual pressure in hectopascal and you're going to see this same line another thing that is this seconds hand now, it can usually show you the seconds while in the barometer. However, if you toggle it with this button, it's going to actually show you the change in pressure between last two measurements. So this, and there are small numbers here, I don't know if you can see them, from 1 to 10 and over, and minus 1 to 10 and under. So this is actually the difference in pressure between the last two measurements. I mean the last measurement and the current pressure. And as you can see this one is at plus one because the pressure keeps rising. And like I said you can toggle it with this button. So now it's just a seconds hand. Now it's the barometric difference. Uh, another thing that you can do in the barometer is turn on the weather alarm. Now the weather alarm means that the watch is going to constantly check for the pressure every two minutes for the next 24 hours, no matter what you do with the watch. So to turn on the weather alarm, you simply press and hold the adjust button. And once info is on, you're gonna have this little borrow displayed right here. And now even if we exit the barometer and go back into the home screen, or stopwatch or whatever we're using, the watch keeps constantly measuring the pressure every two minutes. And in case of a sudden change in pressure, it's going to beep and actually draw a couple of symbols here. And I'll put a picture of what each symbol of the, each one of these symbols means. So basically, if there's a storm coming, the watch is going to beep to tell you that there's a sudden change in pressure and that you should get ready for a storm or if it's getting better. Now this borrow, like I said, is going to turn itself off automatically after 24 hours, or you can manually turn it off by again going into the barometer and pressing and holding this until info goes to off, like so. Please note that when you have the weather alarm on, the automatic time reception and the power save function will be disabled. The last thing that you can do in the barometer is actually calibrate it and change different values. So to calibrate the barometer also, although this is something that you probably will never have to do, but in case you notice that the barometer is not showing the correct data to calibrate it, you simply pull out the crown while in the barometer mode. And now you can change the barometer, the, uh, the, the data that the watch is currently reading if you have a very accurate barometer by your side. Since this one is very accurate and doesn't need correction, I will leave it like that. Pressing the mode button while in the calibration mode is going to ask you for the units. So this is where you can change between hectopascal and millimeter HG, like so. Pressing the mode button again goes back to the calibration of the barometer. To stop the calibration, you simply push in the crown. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the barometer, which like I said, to me, is one of the most useful functions that this watch has. Okay, moving on. The next function is the thermometer. And this one is pretty self-explanatory. You uh, move to it with the mode button and it's gonna display the temperature. Now, when, it, when you're in the thermometer, it's going to take readings every five seconds for the first three minutes, and then it's going to switch to every two minutes for the next hour. If you don't touch anything for the next hour, it's simply going to restart and exit the thermometer. And another thing that you can do in the thermometer is naturally calibrate it and change the units just like in the barometer. And it does it the same way. You simply pull out the crown, and if the temperature is not correct, you can calibrate it by turning the crown. To change the units while in the calibration mode, you press the mode button, 
and the watch is going to ask you what units you want to use and then by turning the crown you can change it to Fahrenheit or back to Celsius. Once you've completed the calibration, you close in the crown. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so the next function that we're going to cover is the altimeter. To get to the altimeter, you first have to be in the home screen and then you press the dedicated altimeter button, which has it just like the compass. So pressing the altimeter button enters the altimeter. And now the watch is going to start measuring every second for the first three minutes. And after that, it's going to switch to one of the two selected intervals. The first one is every five seconds for an hour, after which it will jump back to the home screen or every two minutes for the next 12 hours, after which again, it's going to jump into the home screen. Now you can restart these cycles whenever you want by pressing the altimeter button again. And as you can see, this cycle has just restarted. Now, while the altimeter is working, it's going to display the altitude right here. And it's going to display with these blocks graphically the altitude change. Now, each one of these blocks left and right can represent up to six readings. And these six readings depend on time, whether depending on the interval, inter interval you selected, it's what they're going to be. Now, on this, it's every second. So each one of these blocks is one second uh, left and right. Once it switches to the two minute interval, it's going to be two minutes. If it's five second interval, it's going to be every five seconds. Up and down, each one of these blocks represents 10 meters. So if you see a block moving up, that's a 10 meter difference. Now this watch can not only display this altitude, which you're currently in, it can also display the difference from your reference altitude by using the seconds hand. And to do so instead, as you can see, the seconds hand is now uh, displaying the seconds. To display the difference in altitude, you simply press the adjust button. And now it's going to tell us that we're, uh, since the reference altitude can be set to any altitude you want, but by default it's set to zero, and we're currently at 98, the seconds hand is showing, uh, it's going from one, from zero to 100 meters, and from zero to minus 100 meters. As you can see, you have just like on the barometer, where you used it for hectopascal, here you're using it for meters. So it goes from one, two, three, four, all the way to nine and over, and over here to minus nine. Now this seconds hand or these numbers can represent from zero to a hundred or from zero to 1000 meters. And you select that in the calibration mode, just as you select the interval in the calibration mode. Now the calibration mode for this, so let's restart the cycle. And the calibration mode for the altimeter is very important because the altitude is actually calculated based on the barometric pressure and barometric pressure changes with weather. So even if you're stationary at one place and not changing altitude, as the weather changes, the altitude displayed here is going to change. So although this watch has a very, very accurate altimeter that can detect changes down to one meter, because it simply calculates from the from the barometric pressure, it's very prone to mistakes uh, the longer you are at a certain location. So this is why you want to calibrate it as often as possible. So if you're hiking, you want to calibrate it whenever you reach a point where you know what your altitude is, whether it's a marker or whether it's a point on your map where you know what the altitude is. Now to calibrate it, you simply pull out the crown. Once you've pulled out the crown, by turning the crown, you can change the reference altitude like this. So let's say we want to correct it and we want to put it to 90 meters, like so. Once we close the crown, now, our, now the altimeter thinks that at this pressure we're at 90. And as you can see, the reference altitude has moved to this number 9. Now the other things that you can do in the calibration, so let's pull it up. Once you enter the calibration mode with the mode button, you cycle through what you want to change. So if we just calibrated the altimeter, pressing the mode button, it's going to ask us for the interval. Now, that's the thing that I said at the beginning. So this watch is currently set up to measure altitude every five seconds for the next uh, hour. If we turn the crown, we're going to switch it to every two minutes for the next 12 hours. Let's put it back to every five seconds. Pressing the mode button again, asks you what you want the units of the differential to be. So if you put it to 100 meters, this one is going to represent 10 meters because it's going to go from zero to 100. And that's since we're at 90 meters, you saw that this hand was actually at nine. Now, if we switch it to 1000 meters, 
each one of these numbers is going to represent the hundred of meters all the way to a thousand and all the way to minus thousand. Pressing the mode button again takes us to the unit selection. So here we can select really one meters or feet and pressing it again cycles back to the reference altitude. Now since we changed the difference altitude that this second hand shows to be in thousands, I mean in hundreds all the way to a thousand meter, if we close the crown, this second hand shouldn't be pointing at nine here, but it should point between zero and one here because we're at 90 meters. So let's just close it. And as you can see, the second hand is showing just shy below nine, below one, meaning it's showing 90 meters. Now, if you want the second hand to show you the seconds of the time, just like in the barometer, you simply press this adjust button and it's gonna do it like so. So that's pretty much it. Now, while in the in, while in the altimeter, this watch is going to store certain values. It's going to store the maximum altitude that they've ever been at, the minimum altitude that you've ever been at, and cumulative ascent and descent. And it's gonna store all these into the rec screen, which is the function that we're gonna cover last. However, these changes between minimum, maximum, ascent, and descent are gonna be stored only if there's a difference of more than 15 meters. So if you change the altitude by 10 meters, it's not going to store anything. If you change by 15, it's going to store it. You can also do a manual record of your current altitude by pressing and holding the altimeter button. So press and hold, and you're going to have this rec and there. Now the watch just recorded our altitude, current altitude at 90 meters at this time, at this date. And it can store up to 30 manual records. And like I said, those automatic ones are always going to be stored whenever you enter the altimeter. Now these values, <clears throat> the minimum, the maximum, the cumulative ascent and descent are always going to be added. So the ascent and descent are always going to be added whenever you exit. So let's say you exit the altimeter and you go back in. Any ascent that you do doesn't reset the data. It just get, gets added up to the current data that's stored in the watch. And the minimum and maximum, if you let's say go back to the main main time and your current maximum altitude that you've ever been to is I don't know 600 meters you go into the altimeter if you reach 800 meters it's going to store 800 meters instead of 600 however if you go up to 500 meters it's going to leave the old one which was the 600 meters if you know what I mean now let's exit the altimeter and go into the rec screen to see all this data. So to get to the air, uh, to the rec screen, you press the mode button until you reach the rec, which is right after temperature. So barometer, thermometer, recall screen. And once in the recall screen, by using these two buttons, you actually cycle what you're gonna see. Now these O1s, O2s, O3s, these are actually the manual records. So as you can see, the O2 was on 25th of January at 1512, and it was at the elevation of 86 meters. If we go to the one that we just took, I believe that's that's this one, number four, it was 25th of January at 1410, 1410, which was a minute ago, and it was 90 meters. So by using these two buttons, you cycle back and forth. Once you go to the last recorded one, and like I said, it can store up to 30, and after those 30, it's just simply gonna delete the oldest entry. So once you go past the number three, which we just did as uh, as the last one, it's gonna show you the maximum altitude, the date and time when you were at that altitude. As you can see, 242 meters at 1654. Pressing the minimum, it's gonna tell us the date of the minimum. It's gonna tell us what the altitude was and what the time was. Pressing it again, it's gonna tell us the cumulative ascent and the date when it was achieved. If you have more dates, it's probably not gonna display the date or maybe show you the last one, so 77. Cumulative descent, again, the same date, and 77. Now, if you wanna start from scratch because you just started a new hike, you can clear any of these entries. So even the manual ones, as well as the maximum, minimum, ascent and descent. To clear any of these, you simply select which one you want. So let's say I wanna clear the, the cumulative ascent because I wanna start a new hike where I wanna see how much I'm gonna ascend in total. You simply select the ascent and press and hold the adjust button, like so. 
and there you just cleared the ascent it's now zero and now you can start your hike and it's going to keep adding whenever you go up it's going to keep adding the elevation as long as you're passing 15 meters like i said now as you can see you can select any one of these so let's say a manual entry the same you select it you press this and you cleared it now if you have 30 entries and the minimum and maximum and everything and you just want to reset all the data this will be kind of bothersome to go and, and reset each one of these. So you can do an all reset by simply holding this more than five seconds. So it doesn't matter what you select. I don't know, we can select maximum. If you press and hold this for more than five seconds, it's gonna say clear all, like so. And now the whole recall screen has been cleared. The minimum, the maximum, as you can see, everything is empty. Ascent, descent, and the manual one so everything is clear in the memory of this watch anyways that's it the recall screen completes the part two tutorial where we cover the abc functions like i said if you want to know about regular functions and how to set up the watch make sure to check out the part one i hope you liked this video and enjoyed it and found it useful if you did please like and subscribe and until the next video bye